Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. We have a nice list of games that have been patched recently, including another Crab's Treasure, Grime, Moonglow Bay, South Park Snow Day, a Uden Chronicles 100 Heroes, Star Wars Battlefront, and of course, more Combat 1. Now this series is predominantly designed to help you when you're making a purchase, but as we get closer to the end of the Switch's life cycle, I've certainly got more fodder for the videos. Also, do help me get it out to the masses. You can click buttons and leave comments, if that is you enjoy this type of content. Now I absolutely do not condone releasing games in terrible states, but I also don't want you to go buying something that's not ready yet. Are these all patched up? Well, my name's Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up, now let's find out. Let's begin with Grime then. I've been keeping my eye on this one, checking it almost weekly just to see if a new patch has come out because when it launched, as you can see, it was not in a great state. Here were my thoughts on performance. Now it targets 30 frames per second, but unfortunately it does not maintain that. The main issue here is the frame pacing. As you can see, you'll notice some stutters in the movement. This persists in almost every aspect. Aside from that, we've got the visual quality. Now I wouldn't say it was a stunning game at release, but it was 60 frames per second and it had some nice lighting effects. Now here on Switch, we have downscaling in almost every aspect. Now we have the version 1.3.6 patch. Now I don't like to rest on my laurels and just leave things the same. I've actually added in a new feature to these patch reviews and that's the post patch install size. I think that's useful. So post patch the install size is now 3.9 gigabytes. Interestingly the previous was 0.2 so I wonder if behind the scenes they've really been working hard and maybe had a few patch iterations before we've seen this version. Some of the main issues such as the lags well they are much better. It's got better frame pacing. There are much much sharper details still it does have that blurred look on some of the background items having played this over on steam as well i can say that is actually almost part of the game's design for better or worse in some of those areas but still the switch version looks a little worse for wear there as you can see from the frame rates it's definitely better than it was before managing to maintain its frame rate much more consistently but the big intangible here is the frame pacing you just feel that it's more responsive than it was before. And on that note, input latency does seem to be improved. It's just better to play now. Again, it doesn't feel as good as it does when it's at 60 frames per second, obviously, but actually I'm really pleased to see the developers have continued to work on this one behind the scenes. Alias in is quite bad. You see quite a lot of jaggies on the edges of things, but I don't really care that much about that. It's the main performance and that frame pacing, which is the biggest win. Still a little work needed, but much better than it was before. Now this episode's sponsor was actually chosen by my 10 year old daughter. It's a game called Bomb Cat. She saw it on the eShop and then the publisher actually reached out to us and were like, would you uh, do a little segment for this? And let's just say, um, well, the decision was made. It takes its gameplay from classics, but then introduces this bomb mechanic. And it's a simplistic pick up and play experience, albeit with, um, yeah, exploding cats. It's very easy to control, has a very catchy soundtrack, and uh, yeah, as my daughter tells me, cats. That's kind of the answer for everything these days. I actually caught her in the garden pretending to be a cat. I was like, what, what's, what's happening here? Needless to say, her reply was simply a meow, and I walked off. This one's addictive, enjoyable, and yeah, if you want to support the channel, click the links in the description or the top pinned comment to go check it out. It launches with a 72% discount and comes out tomorrow, I believe, that being the 3rd of May. Once again, a thanks to those guys and my daughter for sponsoring this video. We might as well jump over to Moonglow Bay now. Now, I did quite enjoy this game, although it had a few interesting choices with the characters and things like that. And here are some of my thoughts on performance. But unfortunately, it's the plethora of bugs and glitches which really drag it down. Firstly, there's the performance. There are times where it drops down to 25 to 26 FPS with relatively bad frame pacing, so you'll see it stutter around. Load times are actually fantastic, but it's the visual anomalies that are most apparent. After you've rested at night time, there's a very clear graphical corruption glitch that appears on screen. So they've released the 0.3 patch, and that takes the total install size to 1.1 gigs. Now post patch, as we can see, it is significantly smoother. Several of the visual bugs have actually been fixed. Maybe not 
all of them. I haven't got all day to check, but that frame rate's definitely higher. Now, one thing I will say is I do not know why they haven't capped it at 30. It seems to hang around 35 FPS. Now, there is a very small chance that it's my software, but it seems to have been okay for all other games. So it is more likely that this is running uncapped, but definitely, yeah, it feels much smoother than it did before. Visual quality looks about the same, maybe ever so slightly improved, but this version 0.3 is going in the right direction to bring it a little more in line with expectations. Another Crab's Treasure. Now this patch only came out this morning. I checked yesterday, nothing. Just happened to check one last time before making this video and yeah, patch dropped. Now, here are my thoughts when the game first released in terms of performance. Now, the developer and publisher, they said they're patching the game substantially, but obviously this is the launch day version of the game. I've completed the game on PlayStation 5, so the version you're getting is the one I'm playing. And yeah, you do need to know if you're a handheld player, it's just not great right now. If you're playing docked, visually it looks better. It can maintain that frame rate, certainly more consistently than when you're playing in handheld. More than enough for me to enjoy it in this way, but you can definitely see the issues that they're working on. Now they've released patch 0.11.64.2. It's catchy that. This takes the install size to 1.3 gigs, which is still very manageable. And the main thing that I want to see here is that handheld performance, but we'll get to that in a second. Firstly, I will say playing in docked mode is definitely still the preferable way to play. As you can see from frame rates, it can maintain its frame rate most of the time. In fact, it's definitely a little smoother than it was before, if only marginally. And the frame pacing is reasonable. It does spike a few times, but it's not terrible. And the input latency on the controls, that actually feels really good. The actual visual quality isn't too bad. Now I've played this over on PS5 as well and I don't think on any platform it's quite where it needs to be. I think developers have been a little bit surprised. Someone said they'd sold something like 100,000 copies in the first weekend. One of those situations where I think it's blowing up a bit and their resources perhaps do not match the task at hand but still fair play they've got a patch out and on nintendo switch it's not easy to do that and nintendo take ages to actually verify everything ironically but then we move over to handheld mode now the biggest issue in handheld well there's two big ones firstly the visual quality was appalling like it was embarrassingly bad. Like it didn't feel like a finished game. It shouldn't have been released in that state. And then you had the frame rate. Well, I think we've got about a 30% fix here. Like it's 30% towards where it needs to be. Visual quality is much better than it was before. Some of the uh, effects that you see in docked mode are, are present again, but performance, man, it's not great. As you do things like rotate the camera, you can see where it hits its 30 and then it suddenly crashes down to 15 and back up and down. It's not a pleasant experience, but at least it's starting to look the way it should. Much more work required. But as I say, fair play to them for getting a patch out so quickly. As I said in the review, I'm actually really confident that this developer are going to do what they said, well, when we chatted behind the scenes, which was, this really needs a patch. And they were like, yeah. So yeah, I have high, high expectations and high confidence that it will get where it needs to be. Next up, we've got Ayudan Chronicles 100 Heroes, which just came out a few days ago, and it suffers from quite a few issues, but performance hasn't actually been targeted here. Not as far as I can see, at least. They even mention in their patch notes that they're looking into performance and it will definitely be improved. But having said that, it does feel like the load times, and this was one of the biggest issues, the load times for the menus were pretty much broken. So you'd open the menu and then flicking between pages just took forever. Now it does feel to me at least like it's slightly improved here and definitely the longer you spend in the menus, the quicker it gets. I can't remember it doing that before, but you'll see a number of bug fixes here. Ones like a bug that was causing uh, Lamb to potentially not be able to become an ally. That's been fixed as well as a progression bug related to the war mode. And the 1.03 patch that we didn't cover, that has actually quite a few more fixes in there, including improved stability. So, you know, there is a chance that that improved stability is referring to the menus and things like that. But I had also experienced a crash on my review playthrough. So loading up some old saves and just playing for an hour or so, I haven't actually crashed the game. So at least that's something. I'm sure Rabbit and Bear Studios will continue the good work because I think this is an outstanding game and it upsets me I had to give it such a low score.
I do want to give Star Wars Battlefront Collection another mention. Now, the patch 1.0.3 just came out. I'm not going to talk about the original performance. Like, it was okay. We all know online was rubbish. It's pointless talking about online anymore because he's dead totally and utterly dead. But what I will say is the latest patch does seem to have introduced some heavy stuttering in some places. I don't know if this is just me, but when you combine that with the fact that it's now up to 34.1 gigs and they haven't added in gyro with this latest update, it's just a bit disappointing really. Still, let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe that was always there, but I don't remember it stuttering quite like that. South Park Snow Day, I actually really quite enjoyed the game. I mean, there was nothing revolutionary here and it took things in a very different direction. It was pretty mid, but you know, it was okay. It did have quite a few drops in terms of performance. So with the 1.0.5 update, you're looking at a 10.2 gigabyte total install. And firstly, I had a big issue with sound actually. So there weren't many sound effects. That hasn't changed, like it still sounds like you're just punching nothingness. Performance does look to be more stable. Actually, the frame rate is maintained much more consistently here, as you can see. But oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I have hit a couple of these game-breaking bugs where I've just disappeared through the floor, which I didn't have in my entire review period. So developers, I'm sorry, sorry to disappoint, but I've broken your game. If you want uh, any footage about how that happened, uh, reach out to me and I'll send it across. Last but not least then, let's go and check out Mortal Kombat 1. Now I do want to say that when this first came out, yeah, the visual quality was pretty shocking. I mean, it had so many issues, you know them by now. There's like memes everywhere, but the developers have continuously worked on it. This has had more patches in the last, how long has it been out? Six months? I don't know. In the last since it came out than any other game that I've checked. I think we're up to version 1.14.0 and that gives it a total install size of 39.5 gigs. It's the largest game I own on my Switch. Now I am actually pretty damn rubbish at Mortal Kombat. So I do want to give a shout out actually to a channel called Switch Played. He's reviewed all of the Mortal Kombat 1 Switch patches, but he's a decent player. So he's noticing things that I never would. So I will pop a link to his review of this patch because it's very good and you should go support him. But image quality and models are so much better than they were when the game first released. But you're still going to know it's the Switch version and you're still going to see some weird bugs. One of the ones he found was one of the character's hair literally gliding off their head like a rumba so yeah they're still going and they should carry on but version 1.14 is going in the right direction So that's it for this episode. I have actually got patch information for quite a few others things like expeditions grounded Outer Wilds, Everdream Valley, they've all had patches and I've gathered lots of bits and bobs. The aim is to hopefully release another episode next week because yeah, I really like making these. They're just fun, but they just take so long. But it's all good. Let me know what you think in the comments. A thanks to our Patreons, our members, all of you that enjoy the content. Save yourself a bit of bunts. Use our website, switchup.gg, if you're able, if it's in your region. You'll get 5% back in cash back whenever you buy eShop credit and you still get your Nintendo Gold Coins. Happy days. Thank you. Have a good one. And for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see you